All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is see how we can take a bowl and fill it up with other objects. Now, these could be um, fruit, could be vegetables, could be other decorations like ornaments, which is what we're gonna be doing here. Um, and we're gonna do this using Dynamics and a little bit of MoGraph. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's the end result what we're gonna be shooting for, where we have a bowl, we have some ornaments, and if I hit play, you will see that these fall and fill up the bowl. Now we do lose a few, we'll see how to deal with that as well, okay? Um, but this is a great way to create a decoration, part of a still life, um, you know, whatever you need. And all of these elements are from the asset browser. So if you come in here and search ornament, you will get the ornaments. If you come in here and search bowl, you will get the bowl. Now I did convert these over to Redshift, but aside from that, they are straight out of the asset browser um, with the one exception that I collapsed all of them down into a single um, piece of geometry. They come multiple parts with subdivision surfaces. I turned the subdivision surfaces off. I connected and deleted everything to give me a single piece of geometry. Uh, that will work much better and it'll be easier to set up um, when it comes time to uh, getting the dynamics going. So let's go ahead and get started. I have the um, ornaments there. I am going to turn off the materials just so we can see things a little bit easier. I think those materials are just a little distracting. And what we're going to do is take these ornaments and put them into a cloner. All right. So there's my cloner. Drop all three of my elements in there. You'll see the mode is currently set to grid. And that's why I have this interesting spacing that's way too big for this. I need to adjust the size here so that one, these objects aren't touching, all right, or else they'll explode. I guess I can show that. Uh, but also so that they will kind of fit in the bowl and not spill over right away. So can adjust the spacing there on the top as well will be important. So I can just copy and paste that and really start creating all the ornaments I will need. So that's a good start. Maybe one more there. Now we need the dynamics tags. Now rigid body simulation is still or has been moved to the bullet tags. It's no longer in simulation tags. I do think in a relatively, uh, you know, like the next version or so, I would expect them to move or, you know, figure out how to put these or put them back in here. But these are the, the newer simulation system. These are technically the old simulation system. And honestly, rigid body should be pretty easy to do if you can do soft body simulation. So um, that's probably more for a legacy thing. But what we want to do on the bowl is add a collider body. Now, this means um, it's not going to have gravity applied to it, but it will interact with other objects in the simulation, other objects that have a simulation tag, uh, in this case, a bullet tag. Um, because I'm using the cloner, I only have to add my rigid body tag to the cloner instead of the individual element. So not only is the cloner really nice because it helps simplify the, the creation of all of these different, um, uh, you know, ornaments, but it also saves me a bit of time on the actual simulation part of this because I don't have to apply this tag to each individual object. And should I want to make a change to something like uh, the bounce or friction, um, I only have to do it in one place. Okay. Um, now I do have other videos on dynamics. If you are interested in those, those will be um, down below so you can uh, see those. Um, but let's go ahead and see what happens when we hit play. All right. Actually, they're not kind of exploding like I was anticipating. So let's make these overlap just a bit more to see that there there we go we're seeing a little bit of it notice how um and you can't unfortunately scrub with a simulation um i mean it looks like you can a bit but it's not going to be accurate to what you would get but notice how they kind of come out instead of just dropping straight down and that's because they're overlapping so i'll set that back to i think it's nine in this case where they're not overlapping notice now much more of a vertical drop uh, now we can keep increasing the Y count until we get all these, we get this filled up. All right, maybe even lose one, not that it's the end of the world. All right, and it actually turns out, I have a few, I think, that are kind of beneath the bowl. So we'll raise these up, not too high, 
Um, we really just want them to drop as little as possible so they don't bounce, they don't, you know, get lost and fall over, but that looks pretty good. Okay, let's add one more just in hope that we do get one to fall out so we can see how to deal with that. So it looks like we got one, maybe another. Perfect. Great. And so when you are done with this and you're like, you know, I think this looks good. I want to bake this out so I don't have to deal with this simulation every time. What you first want to do is come over here to the um, dynamics body, the uh, rigid body tag, come here to cache and hit bake all. And that will bake out the simulation. It's going to save all that animation information in our file directly. And what that means is we'll also be able to scrub through this now and find, you know, the exact frame where we like uh, the way everything looks the best. Notice how things are still kind of settling even towards the end here, okay? And once you do find that frame, and I'm gonna just choose one here where, like I have these elements that are not too far because these will just fall for forever and that can be a problem in and of itself. So maybe I'll just do like this frame. What you can do is right click and do a connect objects plus delete. Okay, get rid of my dynamics tag. And there we go. All right, we can now come in here to this object, select it, maybe by selecting a polygon, choosing select connected, maybe even just doing a rectangle selection since this was originally made of multiple pieces and deleting it. And there you go. But if I turn on my materials, you'll see that this looks a little bit strange. All right, there's a very regular pattern here. So let's undo to my cloner. And what do you know, we can see that pattern in the cloner itself. Now there is a way to fix this just by using materials. Okay, using the color user data um, node, if you're familiar with that. But because I have three different elements, you know, three different ornaments with three different materials, the easiest way is just going to be to switch the mode here from clones to random. Notice now how the colors are randomized. I can adjust the seed if I'm not happy with what I have initially. And then from there, go through and cache this again. All right, can take a little bit of time depending on the speed of your system, how many elements you have. So if you had something like fruit, you know, and that had a lot more polygons, obviously that is going to take a lot more time. But that's looking good. And we still have that one that falls off, which I can take care of again. I'll do a connect objects plus delete, get rid of the dynamics tag, back to polygon mode, rectangle select around it. And it's just a good thing to, to get into the habit of, of doing a select and connected in case there's some polygons that aren't visible to us because they're facing the other way that we don't have selected. And then we can delete that. And there you go. There's our bowl filled with objects that could be anything, but in this case is um, ornaments. So that will do it for this video. But in terms of dynamics, this really is just kind of scratching the surface. So um, I do have some other videos that you can check out if you're interested, not just the rigid body type um, simulations like this, but also um, soft body cloth as well. Uh, so that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you wanna see, just let me know and take care.